Hey guys, Money Man 300 and got another tuning video here today and this time we're on, it's an S-Class car and it's the Audi R8 and it's the 2013 model and I did leave it all-wheel drive. This is, uh, this is not going to be a leaderboard type of tune. This was really tuned to run as an all-arounder in the lobbies. You can run it on pretty much any track that you want to and be able to put yourself up towards the front. Um, it handles really well. It's got outstanding acceleration, which is what really makes it uh, shine in multiplayer. It's going to be a little bit better on the shorter tracks, on the tracks that require uh, that acceleration out of turns, because it does that really well. It's really planted. Um, so, so really, this is this is more of a lobby car than a leaderboard car. So, I'm, so as such, I'm not actually going to. Uh, go in and show you against a rival. I'm, what I'm going to do is just show you a, a first lap of a race, show you how you can just get out front quickly, um, even though I think in the race I start out front, but you can see the acceleration and the pull away that I get, and just show you the first lap of that race. I don't want to show it, you know, go through a whole race uh, with it, take a lot of time in the video, but just give you an example of how it can run in multiplayer, and then we'll head back over into the garage and take a look at our build and tune. So let's head out on the track and I'll uh, show you the uh, the lap there. Okay, so here we are out on the track, and uh, you know you can see right here, see the acceleration that I get uh, right off the jump. And I, I do start out front, but it, you get around that first corner so quick that I'm actually able to avoid the normal pileup in this. And you can see how much distance I've already, you know, I've really already put between myself and um, and the and the other racers. So um, really, from here, it's just about driving clean, and, and there's really not a lot to talk about in this. So I'll kind of just let this play a little bit, let you guys. Take a look, you'll see me looking back every once in a while, and, and they do start to catch up. There is a guy catching up with me a little bit there, and he's just, um, this car doesn't have a ton of top end. Um, it's hard to do that in S class with this car uh, without switching it out to a rear, a rear wheel drive. You can actually make it faster by doing that, but I really wanted to stay true to the car and keep it uh, all wheel drive. So um, I did that here. So we can see, uh, you know, coming through and through here nicely. Uh, hit, hit my favorite wall right there, which really slows me down. And then I got a brake right there just to keep it on the track. So, kind of, you know, doing it to myself, pull, pulling people back into it. But I think I drive okay through this part of the track. Oh, get a little brush there that kind of throws me off. But overall, not bad through that part of the track. But you can see they're all right there, and I'm staying. I'm able to stay in front of them. They're, and they were running significantly faster top end cars. You know, what I had is I had handling and acceleration over them, so. Um, and even then, coming out of here, my acceleration is good enough that it creates enough distance that it actually keeps me in front of them, even though they were a little bit faster. So I kept looking. You can see them. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. But by then, we're getting too close to this, and they're actually pretty smart racers. It's a very difficult place to overtake when you're coming up on there, so they actually, they actually stay back nicely. And I can hear a little crashing going on there. Um, and then come out of this first lap in pretty good shape. Um, we won't go through the, the whole race. Like I said, we'll just show this first lap. Just gives you a real good idea of what the car's capable of in, in the lobbies. Still out front. And uh, we will cut it off as we go across the finish line here. And we will um, head on over into uh, the garage and take a look at our build and tune. Okay, so here we are over in the garage. Um, pretty cool looking car, really. Let's take a you know, let's take a quick look at it. Really love the the looks of that. Um, pretty cool paint job. Um, just one I downloaded off of the uh, um, just off the uh, the market. I don't want to call it marketplace, but just one I downloaded. Not one I made myself, but I, but I did like it. Had some kind of cool colors in it and things like that. Um, if you want to find it, just do a search for uh, pick a, pick your top two do racing and replica and you'll see it in there it's it's pretty quick but uh but yeah that, that's the car right there um so a pretty cool look at it there so let's uh hop out of here and let's go into uh let's go into the garage area and take a take a look let's as always start over in our engine conversion area and we do have an engine swap we're all the way over to the six liter v12 engine and i actually played around with doing this stock i did it with you know, stock and then upgrades on top of that. I actually did it with the 4.5 liter V8 
and and upgrades on top of it and this was still the best i still got the most horsepower and speed out of the six liter v12 so uh, this really is the engine you want to use when you're going up to s class um, and it seemed to work the best i didn't find anything else in there um, we left this at at all-wheel drive like i said you can make it and you can see i actually had i think this is one i had previously so um, and was playing around with the rear wheel driver. No, I downloaded, I know what I did. I downloaded a tune and they had it set at a uh, rear wheel, at a rear wheel. So I think that's what a lot of people are doing with this car because, you know, you're just able to get, I mean, look at the PI difference just by switching that to, to the rear. I mean, you just get a bunch more PI back and there's things that you can do. I don't really like that. I think that's a, a little bit much and it really kind of detracts from the all from some of the all-wheel drive cars like this car in the game. I think that if it was if they were able to balance that all-wheel drive out, this this R8 would be a killer leaderboard car also and a great uh, lobby car, but as it is, it's still a great lobby car. Um, and then we have no aspiration conversion on there. Not able to do that. That obviously adds a ton to it. So, um, and let's head over and I have i believe one engine part in here and it ended up being the uh was it valves or displacement let me look uh it was the valve so we have the race valves in there i was to get it fill in our last bit of pi here and with that let's take a quick look at the numbers we have seven six speed five seven handling 9.5 acceleration like i said it's an that's what really gets there in that launch at 10.0 and 6.2 braking. We have 668 horsepower, 498 foot-pounds of torque coming in at 3,114 pounds. 45% of that to the front and 6 liters of displacement with that V10 that we have in there. And then some other numbers are 0 to 60. It's a pretty quick 0 to 60 number in 2.5. Again, the acceleration is great. Um, not a... Not a Tremendous top speed in 189 miles an hour. Uh, you are sacrificing some of that uh, with that acceleration and having the all-wheel drive. But uh, those are the numbers there. So let's keep going through our build. Let's uh, head over into our platform and handling. We're going to have race springs and dampers, race front roll bar, race rear roll bar. There is no roll cage in here. Um, Could have grabbed a couple extra PI, but I didn't think it was worth it for the 50 pounds that you add on there. So uh, we, we left that off. I really wanted to get the weight out of this car. It's a pretty heavy car being all-wheel drive uh, to start with. So uh, we, we do have race weight reduction also in that. And it's a pretty big number. Six, it drops 600 pounds off of that. So dropping 600 pounds, we're still coming in just over 3,000. So pretty heavy car. I uh, really wanted to get the weight out of, out of it so we get that, that acceleration. And it also really helps with your braking as well. Uh, when you have a have a lighter car so uh in the drivetrain area we're gonna have the sport transmission right here and then also the uh, as always our race differential those are the only two pieces we have in the drivetrain area and let's head over to our tires and rims and we're gonna have the sport tire compound not able to go all the way to race um, without really changing some things around um, it's really planted anyway. Might have been nice to get to race. You can see our handling number goes up. Uh, braking is probably really where this would have helped out a lot, um, but just not quite able to work that in without sacrificing uh, that engine upgrade and even more horsepower. So we're there, and I think we're in the middle tire upgrade. So yep, we have 265s on the on the front, and then the rear we are at 335s, which is also the middle upgrade on here almost get one more out of this potentially you could go here and drop down in some wheels so um I, it, it's pretty good the way it is but that's that's one adjustment that you could make if you really wanted to i'm not losing the back end at all i, I don't think there's really much value in doing that i think you're better off just keeping the weight off with the wheels that are on there um, but that is something that you could do speaking of wheels we have what we at here Probably about halfway through the wheels in there. We have the Graham Lights 57 Optimize in there. And I do not have any upgrades in that. And if you really wanted to, you could. I don't know that it provides you any benefit if you like the look of it. Uh, I think you can probably do both of these. It adds a uh, few pounds to it. Again, I'm just trying to keep that weight down. So uh, no upgrades in the rim sizes. So let's head on over. And our last area, we do have both the front arrow and uh, rear Forza arrow on both of those so that's all of our all of the build let's head on in and take a look at our tune so on the tires we have 27 and a half and 27 and a half in the front this i did check this in um in the test drive and that was getting to a 
good even temperature front and back in the somewhere in the 230s you know depending on the track or what i was doing and then um and then the tire pressure was i think in the 33 range so and again about the same in the front and the back so it was pretty balanced being an all-wheel drive uh having 27 and a half and 27 and a half oh and now i have 28 um 4.45 this is the default i did not change this at all um and so this is something you could play around with again going to be a little bit track specific but it was geared pretty well you're never going to hit seventh gear in this you can see seventh gear is like off the page somewhere out there and you have to turn this up all the way you know if we start running it up here and to get, even get seventh gear in here somewhere you gotta run up like five five and you just it's it's ridiculous going through the gear so you don't really want to do that i'm not uh i'm not even sure how you would use seventh gear in this you'd have to have uh, a lot more of the upgrades as you bring it up into a higher higher class if you want to take it up into our class um, this could make a pretty good R-Class car also. You start slapping some engine upgrades on there, upgrade your tires. Um, could be kind of a beast in, in R-Class as well. And, and I might do that. I might uh, go ahead and take this up there. You can, should be able to use a real similar tune on everything else. So let's head over to our alignment. This is another one of those that benefited from having more negative camber in the rear than in the front. And and the symptom I was having that I, that I corrected by doing that was I was getting oversteer right at the point when I turned in. So it would be, it would turn in and I would immediately just kind of skid out a little bit every time I turned in. It could be going slow into a corner and, and the fix for that, at least with this car, was to add a more negative camber in the rear and that worked really well. Uh, I did that, I had lower numbers on there. I actually drove it with default and it was like negative 10 and 0.5. I took that negative 0.5 up to 1.5 in the rear and it immediately fixed it. And then when I came back in to do some more fine tuning, I bumped them both up, kind of kept them um, at an at a even uh, apart from each other and ended up at negative 2.0 and negative 2.6. And I left the toe default as well as the caster at 5.0. Uh, the roll bars, I have 15.81 and uh, 20.21. Uh, this is a little bit of an oversteer tune where we have the front uh, softer than the rear. It's also pretty considerably different than where it starts. This car starts really stiff, so I really had to soften it up a little bit. And you'll see that in the springs as well, uh, with the front softer than the rear, uh, slightly oversteer tuned, uh, 630, and that's pretty typical for an all-wheel drive car. They tend to understeer, so you're gonna wanna uh, uh, soft, have the soft generally front, or, uh, what? <laughs> have the front generally softer than the rear and uh and get yourself a little bit of an oversteer tune to eliminate that understeer so uh in the front we have 630.6 and in the rear 770.8 the ride height is 38 and 38 i would suggest and i'm actually going to do this right now um it's still when i drove it on i actually I raced a multiplayer race on sebring and coming across those bumps on that last turn it sent me skidding a couple of times so i've already bumped this up once and because i softened it up and because you'll see i have full arrow on there uh, I think the ride height, even up to 4.0, I shouldn't have any other negative effects, but I'm going to go ahead and bump that up just a little bit more and um, protect ourselves from those bumps that, that, that you run into. Um, in here, I have 9.2 and 10.0, and I actually was going to drop, I always drop the bump stiffness down, and I actually just forgot to do it. The car's pretty good. It might even be better if you come in here and let's see, what do we have? 7.0 and 7.5. So I'd recommend um, going something like uh, maybe 2.5, maybe not all the way down. So maybe something like 2.5 and like 2.2, two, or sorry, and like 3.0. So something like 2.5 and 3.0 in here. Uh, maybe even maybe even a little bit lower there. Uh, let's do something like this. So I would recommend coming to here. So. Um, you're gonna want to try it. You might want to try it with the values I had in there first. The seven, I believe it's seven zero and seven two. Try it with the values I had in there first. See what you feel. Then go in and just make this one change. Change it to two point zero and two point five, and drive it again. I think you're gonna like it better. I think it's gonna be more responsive uh, going into and coming out of turns. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I totally forgot until I came in here. That, that's just one of the last things I do. I kind of get everything dialed in, then I come in and I drop that, uh, drop the bump stiffness all the way down. It just works well in this game. It's just different in this one than it was in previous Forza titles. Having really soft uh, bump stiffness really, really works well. So 
uh, I would I would recommend doing that and I'm just gonna leave it there for my purposes and then uh, full arrow and full arrow really isn't that much on this car it's just the standard Forza arrow you're not getting any extra downforce so you're only at 10272 really no not a big penalty for go ahead and taking all of it it doesn't reduce your speed that much and it does help with the handling on it um, if you didn't like if you feel like you're getting too much drag you could definitely back that off and, and make that more comfortable brake balance slightly different than what i normally have um 51 at 53 i was i was locking them up um more than i'd like to so i backed that back to 51 and that actually eliminated that and the braking felt pretty good pressure is at 140 that's that's a personal preference whatever you like in there you might only want to do 100 110 if you're using abs you generally want to go a little higher with the abs but uh it, it all depends it's, it's a total personal preference thing there uh, should not impact uh, the rest of the car it's just uh, how sensitive you are with your with your uh, trigger finger on the brake so and then the last one the uh, differential we have uh, the front I have acceleration at 60 deceleration at zero the rear we have 75 and 8 and then our balance is 70%. I believe that was default, 70% to the rear. I always like to have more to the rear and 70% is usually a number that I use and that just happened to be the default on this one. So that is all of our build and tune. Uh, like I said, that this is a this is definitely a lobby car. You're not gonna find this car a lot in S-Class, you know, all over the leaderboards. It's, it's scattered here and there, I think on a couple of tracks, but but it's really fun to drive. It's fun to go out in multiplayer lobbies. You can get yourself positioned out front quickly in a race, and then it's really just on you to, you know, to drive good lines and, and stay out front. So, um, so yeah, so it's a really good car. I think you're really gonna like it. Uh, if if you don't want to put the numbers in yourself, I do have it out on the uh, shared out there under my gamer tag, Money Man 300. If you just want to download it, so uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one later.